Hello, it's me again, filling up the internet with all my terrible videos. Uh, that's a point down here. If no one joins, no one joins. I'm doing the stuff anyway. Um, up as usual, as you can see, you've got an A3000 Archimedes motherboard. There, kindly provided by uh, Zarkos, Xavier. Not going to be on long, famous last words. But uh, I'm doing this stuff anyway. I figure I'm not going to do videos on all this stuff, you know, my normal videos, I mean. Um, because there are so many of these boards, I can't do a video on every single one of these and spend multiple hours editing it and uploading it, etc, etc. These are these are literally going to have to be uh, done off uh, camera or on a live stream. So I figure rather than doing it, why not just share it? Uh, let me just pop out the chat. Sorry if you can't hear me for a while, I'm a bit far away from the camera at the moment. Uh, Mr. Agony, good afternoon, good afternoon, SK, hi, hi there, XYZ Concepts, hi, hello, good afternoon, uh, Flooding uh, Batman, Adam Sumner, hi, um, so let me just, uh, hang on, which number I'm in? Right, so I've got the chalp, um, yeah, so as I say, I'm going to be continuing to remove some stuff from here, uh, it's not very exciting, it might not take very long. After I've done that, because I mean, we've, we've got much to remove here, we've got some components up here, there's some on the underside I'll show you, got the remaining pins here to remove this chip, that socket, bits of jumpers, this socket and this chip, uh, and this as well. And later, I will be removing the things up here because uh, there is some corrosion. I could perhaps show you that, actually, if I just pull the board around here. So if you look down here, you can see the corrosion has indeed got around this area here, you know, and these are looking a bit green. There's some green pins in the socket here. Something I've learned about these, I'll share it now, is that the, the, the two sockets here are, look like they're for an optional serial upgrade. Because, well, one of them might be... Uh, yeah, I think they are. Because can you see it's a serial, not fitted. One of the boards, I was fortunate enough, and uh, I've put them in uh, an ESD uh, sponge there somewhere. One of them happened to have, and it might have been this one actually, had a chip there and a chip there. I think this one's like a ROM, and this is some sort of other chip, you know, a serial transfer, transceiver type IC. Um, anyway, yeah, so as I say, these came from Xavier. Thank you very much for providing these Zorkos. Um, but before I do that, we'll just quickly just fly over to the uh, Amiga, because well, it's a bit of a follow-on really, John. it's only going to take a minute, just a follow-on from yesterday's stream there, and uh, I'll show you that that uh, memory expansion is working. Let me just bring the Mac as well, actually, just so I can keep up with the chat. Lots of Amiga power supplies down there, look. <laughs> There's just a few of the ones I've got. One or two of them will be uh, upcoming uh, streams. So if I just uh, carefully try and step over all this stuff. Switch the power on. Do you know, I thought I was coming down with uh, that virus this morning. Uh, I couldn't breathe when I woke up and my chest was really tight and it was like coughing, coughing, coughing. Dizziness. I felt a bit dizzy yesterday after yesterday's stream. Actually, a few minutes after the stream finished, my head was spinning. And I thought, oh my goodness, am I starting with something? I think what it is, my immune system's super weak. And as I explained yesterday, the day before, I cut the grass and um, there was loads of bits of uh, what's the word, you know, like dry leaves and things flying into the air. And I was breathing it all in while I was uh, cutting the grass. Uh, quite why I'm booting that game, I don't know. I'll just stop that. Um, so I think that's all it is. I think I just picked up something while I was out doing the garden the other day. So uh, if you remember at the end of that last stream with this one, that wire, that was a bit mystified. It was really super simple and uh, I forget who it was, but there were a few people saying maybe it goes to the reset. Um, so following that stream, that's exactly what I did. I just connected it to pin 5. So you can see it's on 1.3. I'll show you the wire is just tucked in into pin 5 there. What I did is I pulled the chip out, just wrapped it around a pin and shoved it in. But what I'll do later on another stream perhaps, or later in this one, put a, a proper flexible wire on there that's just about the right length and put a little eyelet on the end of it. The idea being you can either hook it under the reset pin on here because there is one on the keyboard connector or you can do the same sort of thing, just you know, pull the chip out, hook it on and connect it up. Um, so there's no LED on this one but as you can see it's on uh, 1.3. And if I just point you down a little bit, if the tripod's going to assist, hang on. And I'll control Amiga, you can't see my fingers, uh, Amiga it. So it's reset, and uh, if we wait for it to come back up, it should be on 1.2, I think. Hang on, it's not. Let's try that again. Hang on, control 
uh, Amiga Amiga. Is it a momentary one? I can't believe it's a momentary one or hold it down for a second or two. Yeah, there you go, 1.2. See that? It works. I've been testing it. No issues at all. So that was just a short follow on there to yesterday's. Let me just catch up with the comments before I go back over to the uh, board. There may be nothing exciting about this video because all I'm going to be doing is, uh, you know, dissolving and pulling things off that board. Uh, Mike Simcox, afternoon, Chris. Hi. Uh, Spitfire RAF uh, 100 afternoon. We had ZX Kim join yesterday. I realised and I missed uh, the, the, him joining, um, but he's building me um, a uh, an extractor fan for removing the, you know fumes when you're soldering, and it looks amazing. He's posted some pictures on Twitter. It looks absolutely fantastic. So hopefully that might arrive uh, later in the week or maybe next week. Uh, Mr. Agony Pollenology could be, could be. That's the other possibility of maybe why I was struggling to breathe and stuff this morning. Um, my breathing has not been very good though. The, the irony is, anybody who knows who's watched all my videos knows that when I uploaded a video last year, didn't know when I was made redundant. And I, I'm a bit embarrassed about that video, but you know what? I had to share how I was feeling at the time. Um, if you saw that video, you know I was in a really bad way. And at that point in time, I couldn't walk at all. Uh, and I couldn't even sit. I was in that many problems with my leg. Um, but as the year went on, as we got to sort of October, November, at that point I was being forced, you know, I was forced to having to go out and do the shopping because the situation I was in. And it was a real struggle, I'll be honest. I was in absolute agony trying to walk around Lidl. Um, the first few times I went, I was literally like bending over and crouching in the store and everything. It was really hard work. But you know what? As time went on, my leg got better and better and better. It got to like November, December. I think by Christmas time, my leg was perfect. So my mobility's totally back, hence why I was able to cut the grass the other day. So uh, yeah, it's all positive stuff. Uh, despite me <laughs> moaning anyway so let's uh, let's get the mac again and we'll just uh, wheel back over there and uh i'll just carefully position you there and plug the camera back onto the charge oops uh, yeah expect uh, the odd drop oh, of the camera so i'll just tilt you down a little bit Uh, Graham Tinkers, don't be embarrassed. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it was embarrassing. It, it was embarrassing. I'm sure anybody would be embarrassed, but um, I tell you what, that just switched that Amiga off actually before it got burning on the TV. It's just sat there on the Kickstart logo. <sighs> yeah, anyway, nevertheless, I mean, I wouldn't want to put anybody else off talking about things that are extremely. Uh, stressful in the life with uh, online communities so you're opening yourself up to attack so you've got to bear that in mind but talking about things and sharing your feelings and things and it's a good idea in life don't keep things bottled up um but maybe <laughs> consider not putting them on youtube i think uh, anyway i had no choice because I, I you know i've always been isolated i've been home based for the last uh, 10 odd years probably more than that since about 2008 ish or 2009 um so yeah, for me, it was, it was in a difficult situation. Anyway, so these components here, let me just see if I can zoom a little bit. It might be a bit better for you if you can actually see a little bit clearer as to what I'm doing. Oh my goodness, 100 SEKs, the Swedish Krona. Thank you ever so much for that donation. Um, any donations and things like that, I'm, uh, I'm not expecting anything and it's just uh, makes a huge difference to me being able to. Let me just re remove this frame here, hang on. Yeah, it makes a big difference to me being able to get parts and things and even systems for new videos. You know, I've been looking around recently what to what systems to get next to cover on the streams and things and on my uh, normal videos. Um, normal videos will resume. I'm just finding it's better use of my time at the moment. And maybe it's better for you. If you like watching bits of people's streams, you know, and I, I say bits because I know what it's like. These things can go on for a while and you might only be able to watch 10 or 20 minutes or... If you're watching it on the, you know, afterwards catch up, you can just fast forward through to see the bits that might interest you. That's uh, that's the good thing with YouTube, I guess. Um, yeah. So as I was saying, I just removed the two components there. You can see they look black and horrible. The pads are awful. There's a bit of flux around there. Um, so I mean, it might be interesting to see how I approach some of these things here. We've got some awful looking components up here. Let me just give you a close up. Uh, can you see these here? They're really bad. So we're going to remove those. We're also going to need to remove these ones on the underside here. Look at those. 
the, the fascia has completely gone. Can you see that? It should be blue like some of these here with a number. So you can see what size it is. But yeah, these have gone. I didn't expect that these underside ones would be affected. Um, so I, mean, I can show you on the top side because I've got spares for all these. I, I ordered spares for 10 sets of these to replace everything. So we'll remove these ones here. I'll uh, just give you uh, an example of uh, how to go about getting those off. The first thing I would try and do, uh, and this is just my uh, experience here, my process, so that people might do it a different way. Try and clean the tops of the metal part on the can like that. Can you see that? This looks a little bit, you might not be able to, it's still a bit far away there. It's a little bit silvery. Can you see that compared to the ones next to it? You just need something where you can get a metallic, you know, a connection to the solder main. That one's looking, looking a bit silvery. And of course, you might just be able to just clean them up like this and just reflow them. But I think not. I think the corrosion is so bad here. I want to replace them, actually. So it's a question of how do you get them off. I mean, I'll show you. If you touch with the soldering iron, um, I'll show you on one of... Let me just see if I can point you down a little bit. Hang on. I'm not sure if the camera's going to give way at some point under the weight of the thing tilting down. Let's see if we can zoom just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So if I try adding some soldering flux to this one here that's not been cleaned up, you can see nothing happens. It's like trying to solder a piece of concrete. You know, there's a massive blob of solder on the iron there, and I can't get any anything to come off from there. It's just like a big black slab of concrete. And with time, you might get it off. But that, yeah, that's just not heating up at all. So this is why I do this approach here. And you only typically have to do it on one side because these are small components. Um, and I've got the iron set to 410, go a bit higher. Normally you might want to ex expect to go around 350 degrees for somewhere like this, maybe a bit higher, maybe 380, but I've gone to 410. If you just heat one side and then try and heat the other side a little bit as well, uh, add a bit more solder here. All being well, once the component heats up, You'll find that both look both sides of it heal and you can just pull it off just wipe it off onto something that one's gone it really is that simple um, and you may find a similar problem with hot air unless you've scratched so that there's a you know a, a metallic surface exposed there you go one's come off a lot actually sort of going to bin those just wiping them onto some tissue i've got over here paper towel You don't always necessarily need to, you know, remove and replace them, and it really does depend on how bad the corrosion is. A lot of the time, you can get away with. Uh, I'm not sure if I left that on the board. Then I don't see where it went. That one. It's not here, is it? No, it's gone. Um, yeah, sometimes you can get away with white corrosion, just uh, having, you know, scratching them up, add a bit of flux, and reflow it with some new solder, and maybe suck off the old solder, apply some new solder. Yeah, Grumpy Model said doesn't even solder. That's right. It's, it's uh, a nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Matt Whitmark. Much appreciated. Uh, Stephen's here as well. Total by Hi, Stephen. Crikey, the A3000 is a bad way. Yeah. What I tried to do, what, what I'm trying to do with this one, I've picked one of the, the ones that I think are extreme, and uh, we'll see how we get on with it. I've ordered you know, a big bag of components, which I'll show you later when we come to start fitting them back on here. Um, so I'll add a bit of flux now. But what I figured is, We'll see how I get on with the worst one. And if, if by some minor miracle it's possible for me to get this one back up and running, it's going to give me confidence to think, well, actually, we're just going to do the same thing on the other ones, speed up the process wherever I can, you know, learn from the first one here. And uh, hopefully I might be able to zoom through them. I suspect that's not going, to ha not going to be how it plays out. I suspect I'm going to spend hours and hours and hours on this one, and it's going to stress me out so much, I'm going to want to find some other home for the other ones <laughs> like other channels like does anybody fancy spending you know a few weeks restoring one of these because that's what it's going to take you if you're going to do it properly anyway you can see the pads uh cleaned up quite well uh not bad at all considering how awful it looked um but there is the components are shot you know they really are so let's let's do the same with this one let's just a uh, fiberglass pen and there uh, Yeah, that was really bad. I might need to remove the IOC chip here because the, the pins on the side of that are terrible. But with that, I'm hoping I can just, you know, fiberglass it, clean it up, 
get some flux on it and riffle out the side nearest us here. Yeah, so we've got a bit of metal exposed there. Let's just do the same thing again. Big blob of solder. Because what happens, even though we're only heating one side, the component just gets super hot. So eventually, after you know a few seconds, the other side of it comes off anyway. Hopefully. That one's really clinging on for its life, look. There we go, it's, it's coming off, I think. Just get rid of that thing. Uh, do the same with that one. Of course, the less you heat, the better, because, you know, if the pads are in a bad way, just by virtue of heating these for a period of time like this, you might find the pads come away as well. I haven't lost any pads yet, I don't think, but, I mean, I've spotted some, some traces that are damaged. I'm sure there's going to be lots of wires required on this. Again, this one's hanging on for its dear life here. There we go. I think. Hang on. Yeah, there it is. It's on the iron. Temple Fire, I'd start by finding someone who with a large ultrasonic cleaner for that one. Yeah. Yeah, this is, you know, I mention ultrasonic cleaners a lot, don't I? And a lot of people do keep uh, reminding me about them. Um, this is super useful, and uh, I really wish I had one, a large one. I will get one at some point. If I can, uh, you know, continue building a channel up, you never know. If we get sufficient Patreon support and stuff, uh, at some point I might be able to afford uh, a nice large ultrasonic uh, bath. I think I could do with an ultrasonic bath, actually. Uh, you know, like me, jump into it, have a clean. And I'll give these another clean afterwards, these pads. Right now, you know, you can, like, you can see that one's not square. It's kind of coming out weird. It's going to have bits of corrosion on it that need cleaning off, either with a fiberglass pen or... What's that there? A bit of solder on the board or something. Is it a voyeur? Yeah, I think it's just a voyeur. Uh, right, so that's that. Let's go back to what I was doing before the stream started. Uh, sorry, I'm not zooming out a little bit here. I can zoom you back in in a sec. Um, yeah, I was at the point where, can you see? I'll let me show you. The keyboard connectors just broke off here. Uh, in fact, that just, that is a good opportunity to show you. These arrived yesterday, actually. So these are connectors. It was Plan C, I've got to thank for this, because uh, he has done one of these, a similar kind of level of corrosion, you know, on his channel. I'll post a link down to his channel later. Um, and he was trying to source replacements, and he couldn't find any of the right size, but what he did find is, hang on, these are stuck together here, what's going on there? It's like... <laughs> there we go, stuck together somehow. Um, yeah, so we found smaller ones. So he pointed me in the right direction. Says so you can get some of these and do what I did, just cut them. So you know what I'm going to do is uh, you know have one like that, and then we're a few short, aren't we? So what I'd probably do is chop off I don't know three or four there. You know, cut it really nice, cleanly, with a uh, uh, handsaw, uh, and then do the same on the other side so that you can make you know socket. It might be 50-50 because I'm not going to use the offshoots for anything else. So I might just do them literally half, you know, half and half. So it'd be like that. Yeah. So you can actually do that as a replacement. But trying to get one that's exactly the right length these days, I don't think it's possible. It seems to be nobody selling them. They sell auto ones and that's it. Um, so anyway, yeah, you need, so you need two for every one, roughly. Unless you were to start uh, using the offcuts, you know, and being efficient with them, then you may find that you could get, I don't know, uh, you know, more out of them. Uh, you don't have to use 50-50 kind of thing. Um, Retro Game Revival. Dennis, hi. Hi, hi Dennis. Good to see you. Hope you're well. Uh, hope your girlfriend's okay as well. Um, so it's a better save them than scrap them. Yeah, you know, it's like just before the, the stream, that was one of the thoughts that's going through my mind, thinking, is this too much? Because just look. Uh, I'll see if I can zoom you a little bit. Uh, we're going to... Ooh, that's a long way. Yeah, just look at the, the bottom the pad on that where it joins the PCB, you can see how corroded they are. I can't think I can re-rotate re it. See that side of it. 
yeah and you can see a bit better down here with these uh on some of these chips here were a bit crowded before i can't remember it is now it's, it's these ones here yeah look at that corrosion down there as well um corrosion up here look so yeah you do start to question is this uh you know recoverable uh smooth nj hi mark good to see you hello young man yeah i wish i was young <laughs> right so uh, well, let's get back on with this i was talking about that wasn't i, I dissolved a few of the pins there you're just about to see can you see they look awful i did them from the other side did them from this side uh, and that was the point when i realized loads of these need removing so we'll remove those as well in a minute but i need to make a note of which ones i'm removing because i don't have uh well i might have some spares for those out of all the spares i've ordered but i might not have the uh yeah i might have some of them so i might need to order them uh, and also i'll need to know which position which components go in which position when i blitz this in a minute i'm going to need to put them back on at some point oh there's some new ones um so yeah what i've been doing with these again we've got the temperature a bit higher 410 instead of around 350. just try and tin each one up it's painful there we go but if we just can get add a little bit of solder to them and the pin starts to wiggle you know the pins are still in there from it breaking off but if we had just a little bit to each one it doesn't matter if we had lots if we get a big blob there we can just remove it in a minute Uh, and the other thing that someone might have already pointed out, I don't know, I've not seen them in the chat there, but the other thing to consider with things like this is cutting things off. You know, if you, some of these uh, chips and things on here, just the TTL chips, you know, there's a, you can see there's one still here, this one is going to need to come off. You could just cut, snip it, snip it on the top side, and then just remove the pins. Um, but, yeah, I'll remove it. I've removed everything on this. Now, I'm going to clean up what I can. I've got full sets of chips for everything if we need to replace anything anyway. So, let's uh, have a go. I'm going to choose the dissolver pump. My wife's working at the moment nearby, so I don't want to be using the dissolve station. But it's light work, trust me, it is. The other benefit of using a dissolver pump like this is these are pins, aren't they, on their own. There's nothing on the other side of them, so you know what? When you apply suction, the pin comes out and goes up, whatever you're using to remove it. It's easier, in my mind, uh, cleaning out this than it is the dissolver station. Yeah, some of these just the solar just does not flow. There we go, it's moving now. I think the pins come out, it's just a bit of solder there. Yeah, there we go. There's still a pin in that first one, I think. I can feel it. On to the third one. It's gone. Fourth one. Yeah, that one's gone. Yeah, that one's gone. There's just a bit of solder there still, I think. I need my big brush. I've not got my brush at the moment. Um, yeah, anyway, we're nearly there. Just a few more, and then we've got the other side to do. We can start cleaning the top side of it up then. I can feel the pin there. It's hanging on. Yeah, that's not too bad. Worst MS on video ever. <laughs> You're not even whispering. Uh, I didn't know what to put for the title, but because it's going to be boring. I was thinking of putting uh, boring desoldering or something. Yeah, that's how I feel on there. So. Still got some pins there actually, I can feel that. Here. It looks like the pin's gone, but it hasn't. It's on the top side here. Well, the bottom side. Yeah, it's gone now. That one's still there. Still there. It's gone now. Right, let's just uh, move over. So the last ones are here, let's just see if we can work out where they are. There's, oh, there's a few here still. Yeah, that one's still there. Anyway, let's get a bit of solder onto these last ones. I think 
think I already tried to add a bit of solder to those ones and failed actually. Yeah. Oh, it looks awful. I've got no idea how this bit's going to come out when I'm done. Yeah, it's starting to move. a bit more and still that uh... yeah we've still got the odd pin there let me just uh, bring these in there's one there let me just see if it'll Nope. There's still one here somewhere. Let's have a go with that one again. Yeah, that's gone. There's one here. It can look like they've gone. And that's why you need to use magnification, really. It's still there. Uh, Of course, you could just pull them, get some tweezers and pull them, you know, from the other side, but that involves working on the other side of the ball at the same time, doesn't it? Which is not easy for me to do on a stream. Plus, there isn't much of them exposed on the other side, actually. You know, they broke off right at the bottom, where it kind of joins the board. Yeah, they're all gone. There's one here still as well. What's that one? Right at the end, oh, there you go, it's come off. So there's just the one on the end here. No, third one along, I think. It's still there, it's hanging on. Let's see if it'll come off now. There we go. Yeah, there's a bit of solder there, that's not a break no it's not there we go so that's that whole row done let's have a look at the other side and let's move you over here a little bit one minute the camera's doing its usual thing sometimes the hand pump works better yeah i think for certain things yeah you've certainly got more control but the main thing is you've got those loose pins they go up here, they just eject as soon as you squeeze this, you know, as soon as you do that, they come out of it. But if I was to use the solder station, they will go up it and block it. And before you know it, I'm spending hours trying to unblock a nozzle. Um, yeah, so the, despite the horrendousness of this, in fact, there's a pin there, I can feel it, it must have pulled through. Yeah, let me see if I can just heat from this side and pull that off. Sometimes that'll happen, you know, when you're trying to do, do it the way I've just shown there. It's had a little bit of solder as well. You could be tempted to just try and wiggle it, but you know what? The pads are so bad, I'd rather do the least amount of wiggling. You know? There we go. Oh, what a mess. That's the pen, actually. I'm not sure if the pad is completely disintegrated on that side. Because that's not unblocking now, is it? Yeah, anyway, I'll worry about that later. It's not it's not sticking out or anything. Um, so let me just uh, bring a cotton bud in if I can find one. Well, they all gone now, they're over here. With some vinegar. And we'll just start to see how this looks before we get the fiberglass on it and flux and desolder braid and whatever else. We'll get that chip off next, I think. Uh. 
Oh, yeah, it's looking awful, isn't it? So I'm just going to very carefully, again, this is the sort of thing that I usually do under magnification, just carefully go over these gently with the fiberglass pen. I'm not pressing too hard here, I just want to do this really lightly at this stage. If you do press too hard, the traces that lead to and from these, you just you just go through them. I'm expecting some of them are going to be broken anyway already. Let's just clean down there a little bit as well. Yeah, so we've exposed a little bit there. Let's uh, go with the vinegar again. get a little bit of flux on there, we'll, we'll start to clean this up I think. Where's the uh, braid gone? I have a hand pump with integrated heating element, oh very nice. That sounds quite cool. I want one of those. So uh, I'll add some solder to the tip. To me the flux everywhere <laughs> like I've just done and uh, we'll just have a little slide hope we don't lose anything I may need to unblock the odd hole afterwards like that first one there it's just solidified look you can hear it sizzling that's uh, it's not just the flux it's the alkaline it sort of burns away as soon as you heat it with a bit of flux and some solder Let's move around this side a little bit. Hopefully, I won't block it in my hand. Yeah, they're not too looking too bad, actually. I'm quite surprised. That one's terrible. <laughs> you can't even see that one, it's black. Either the pad's gone for that one, or it's uh, it's just super corroded. Anyway, it's, it's a, one of these things where you've got to repeat it. It's like, you know, you give it a first pass, you clean it all up, see what state they're in, you go out with the fiberglass pen again, and you have a second go. Yeah, those ones there are terrible. Starting to get little bits of shininess to it, silver, a little bit. There's a via there as well, let's see if we can turn that. Nope. And a black one there, look, super black that one. Well, I just cut the braid down, add a bit more fresh solder. Yeah, you can see that one went instant silver there. Let's just have a bit more flux as well, actually, as we get further up the side here. I'll need to go get another tube shortly. I mean, the thing is, as well, these you know, it's patience. You've got to have patience to do things like this. You really do. 
it could be one of those things that you just spend an hour or two every now and again, you know, over a few months, and you'll all be able to get to a be an equal or better result than I can here. This is about patience. Don't expect you're going to be able to buy loads of these and turn them all around really quick and make lots of profit. <laughs> that ain't going to happen to anybody. Yeah, that one there's not so clever. Can't even see the last one. I'm not sure if those pads are not there anymore. It's hard to see, actually. Hmm. What I'll do now is just give them a wipe with it, what APA, and then we'll have the fiberglass pen and set it again. Then we'll move on to that chip. CRG, yeah, the dreaded bar to death. Yeah. I wish we could go back in time and, I don't know, tell these manufacturers not to use Varta or any other NICAD plumbing battery. I would have preferred it if they put a battery holder somewhere on the system, you know, like an AA one, double A's, and stuck double A batteries in there. Because, yeah, right, you still would have a leakage, but you know what, I'm darn sure it wouldn't have been like this. Especially if there's a battery container somewhere in the chassis, you know, for those batteries. Yeah, these ones here do need a bit of a scratch because there's barely anything uh, in terms of tinning. So let's just have a go over these ones here again. It doesn't help that I've not cleaned all the flux off, it's a bit fluxy still. Those ones look alright, just maybe the bottoms of them. There's not very good. Sometimes I will uh, use my scratchy to uh, I mean, the big problem is with a bit of friction, you often lose, you know, the pads just disintegrate. I'm not sure if there's anything there. Is it gone? Or is it just PCB with uh, you know, no pad? Hmm, that one started to get tinned up a little bit on that one. that end one there. Yeah, I think the pads just disintegrated completely on that one. There's nothing there. Let me clean it again. Doesn't really matter, it's to be expected that you're gonna have to lose some pads on these. I think all that's happening with that is I'm just heating the PCB on that very last pin. Anyway we've got a little bit, can you say there's a bit of solder on each of those ones there. It's just that first one.
Let me just inspect that with a bit of magnification if I can. Oh, I'm getting a dead leg here from the way I'm sitting. Well, well I'm not sitting crouching. Let me just uh, move the camera a sec. Hang on. I should point you there, so I'll just have a, a nosy at the board. Oh no, the pads are there. The pad is there. I'll show you in a sec. Hang on. I'm just going to scratch it with my little scratchy uh, tool here. Oh. Let me see if I can point you at it while I uh, do it. You might be able to see my right ear. Yeah, sorry about that drop. Hang on a minute. Yeah, I think my hand's going to block it, isn't it? I don't know, maybe it's gone on one side, I don't know. There's a bit on the left-hand side there that's still there. It could be part of the through hole. Sometimes you'll see like a, lip, a very a thin outer, uh, you know, ring around the pin like that, and you can think that uh, it's the pad, but actually what you're looking at, and it comes doing its thing again, what you're looking at is the through edge of the through hole. Did you cut any components between the battery and the keyboard connector? Are those just unclipped jumper wires? No, I've not cut anything. The, uh, the keyboard connectors here just broke off. One of them was literally hanging on. You literally touched it and it fell off the first one. And then the other one, I just bent it over just a little bit and it snapped straight off. So those were completely shot. Completely shot. We'll just get that one pin into the gap and then we'll move on to that chip, I think. I will revisit the, the, all of these areas here, clean them up further. I wouldn't just now solder something onto that. Uh, some of these down here are a bit better. You can see like these these have been cleaned up. They just need going over the braid again because you can see it looks a bit coppery. You know, the traces that go in between perhaps are a little bit exposed. Um, what I need to do is find some repairs that are not super time consuming. Yeah, there is, there's literally nothing to solder onto that first one. Just the very left, you might be able to see the very left edge of it is exposed there, but anyway, it isn't the end of the world. The other ones have come out okay. Uh, let's just see if we can turn up some of the others up here again. Making a sizzling noise. They're coming up quite well, actually, these ones here. Yeah. Not new. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let's just see if I can unblock those first two. It might be easier to unblock them from the other side, but. Unlocked. And that one. So we go over the ones in the middle. Let's just get a bit of extra solder. I've managed to fill that one. It doesn't really matter if they get filled, you can just unblock them later. Yeah, there's not much left of that one. It's another one of those where it's just got partial pad. These are all right. That might be a partial one. Oh, it's not, that one's okay. Blocked now, but it's okay. Yeah, these last ones are bad. Anyway, it's, uh, it's not too bad. We'll just unblock the ones I've just blocked up. And then we'll remove that chip. I've actually got two chips to remove still. I need to remove the keyboard uh, 
the mouse socket here. I don't know why I called it keyboard socket. I'm not really sure what to do in, re in terms of replacing that socket either. I might have to clean it up. I might have to just soak it in some uh, vinegar and uh, get some deoxid onto it and scrub it and stuff and, I don't know, try and clean it up that way. Anyway, I'll give you a close up. So, yes, that's scary at the moment. Let me just get a cotton bud and some IPA. I'll give it a, a wipe. We'll see how much better it is after a quick wipe. The keyboard connectors are the bit I've been threading, and that's going to be where most of the tra traces are required fixing, you know, most of the wires. Let's move it up that way a bit. Hopefully you can see from that example though why you have to go over it a number of times. The first pass there, they didn't look anywhere near that like that, did they? Yeah, a number of cleans, a number of attempts to tin them. A few times with the vinegar. Eventually they'll start to come up really well. At that point you can start to do your connectivity tests and things as well to work out where the traces are broken to each one. Start drawing them on a diagram. We won't bore you with that in this stream. It's just going to be uh, taking things off at this stage. Yeah, that's looking uh, a lot better. So, yeah, more work still required. There's still flux on there. You can see what I mean about this pin here. Can you see, look, the top left of it, it's a bit silvery. So we'd still get a connection to that. I mean, the, I don't know if there's a trace damage there or not, I don't know. Um, anyway, slow, steady progress. Mike Pearman, hi, hi Mike, uh, hi Chris, hi chat. Uh, Stuero, I remember having PCs which required A batteries to keep the time. Yeah, the Amstrad uh, ones did, didn't they? PC 1640s and 1512s, those had uh, a battery uh, compartment on the top, didn't they, for a couple of AA batteries. It was a really good idea, that by Amstrad, I think. It made it user serviceable as well, to, you know, not really serviceable, but it meant that users could just change the batteries themselves. They went, oh my god, my real-time clock's not working. What's this, you know, error coming up to the CMOS settings need setting? What does that mean? Um, they could just change their own batteries. Something I'll uh, mention while I'm working on this board as well as these, you know, ones with corrosion. Uh, if you plan on getting one, you know, if you're tr trying to fix one of these, you get one, you pick up one or someone donates one or someone wants a repair, don't power it on uh, until you've inspected the board. And if it looks anything like this, don't power it on at all. Because, you know, you get bad traces and things here, you know, something, you could get a latch up or something. Something can fail because of broken traces and corrosion shorting things out and stuff as well. So this is not being powered up. Uh, any of these ones, actually, I've shown on my channel, all the ones from Zarkos, not one of them has been powered up, apart from the ones that I took to pieces, worked out what state they were in, fixed a few things, then started to power up to see what it was doing. Um, and if you do that, if you stick with that kind of approach of uh, making sure it's only safe to switch on and then switching on, you'll limit the chance of killing you know, one of the main custom chips or something on here. What's that on top of there? It seems to have got flux all over the IOC. I don't know how that got there. Oh, it's because I was soldering there, wasn't it? Uh, in fact, let's just clean those up with a bit of IP as well. Those pads now. See if they look any better. I'll move you a bit closer, perhaps over there, so you can see that. Yeah, I've got loads of flux on here, looks so sticky. Just gentle, we don't want to snag something. There's a bit of solder there, I don't know if that's a wire. Or I've attached it to the PCB, maybe, I'm not sure. Anyway, by the time that area is uh, cleaned up with a fiberglass pen and I've sorted the sides of this, I'll, I'll probably reflow this, I'll get a bit of flux on there at some point and reflow these two sides of this chip here. Uh, it'll probably look good. Something around there a bit sticky. I 
capacity. That's something else I can show you as well, what you need to do on this. As well as doing that, you see all these little wires? Uh, see if I can find one that I can see. See here. It's furry, and it's like you've got to scratch the stuff off the top and hope you don't damage the trace. Be very, you know, the trace leading to it. Be very careful. Just try and do in the centre of it. Fiberglass pen on its own, you'll just start breaking traces and things. I do it in two stages like that. Um, you know, get rid of the first bit of corrosion and then go over the wider area just gently. And then revisit if you need to, like that top one there, still needs more. Under magnification is the best way to do it. But the fiberglass pen on its own generally won't get all of the alkaline off the tops of these. You get like a crystallized stuff on the surface and it, it needs, uh, you know, like something like that, a sharp tool to scratch initially and then just clean off the, you know, the, with a fiberglass pen afterwards and they usually come up okay. That one there's awful. That whole area's awful. Let's just look at these pads here, can you see that? They're awful. And there's loads of wires around here. Look, there's loads around this cap. There's uh, loads here. Let's get a little bit of vinegar onto it. It has been cleaned with vinegar, this actually. One of the first things I did is just, you know, soak the whole area with vinegar and brush it. But there is advantage, as I've talked about in other videos, of sticking vinegar. Can you see that? Those have gone super silvery. Because the vinegar is an acid, it etches. Whereas if you just wipe that with IPA, it's just all you're doing is cleaning. Um, and anything that's clinging on there won't come off. But with the vinegar, actually, it does. You kind of etch the surface. Hopefully, you can see the difference there. I'll try and get you a little bit closer. Hopefully, you can see the difference just from that little bit of work I've done there. If you're very careful when you with your little tool on the surface of them, you won't damage the traces. Um, but obviously, we do need to test every single one of those um, at some point uh, to make sure everything is, is joined where it should be. Um, I think we'll do this one next. Oh, should we do that one? Well, let's yeah, we'll do the one down there. Actually, I'll just move you back a little bit. Let's, uh, let's do this one. Um, I don't think I started that one. Um, let's move the camera over here now. I think it's. That one there. So let's again turn the pins on it. You could cut it off, as I say. Some people will say, cut it off, just don't bother trying to solder it. Solder's just not flowing. <laughs> the blob's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, isn't it? This is what happens. Because it doesn't want to stick to the crusty pen. You get a little bit on there, but... Yeah. It stinks as well. I need my fume extract from ZX Kim. <laughs> right, let's have a go at that side. Uh, and I'll free it up with hot air. I'll show you that in a sec. That's the easiest way. So I've freed up uh, the other chips on this board. Obviously, the solder station. Uh, well, I don't know. I've not tried it on this board. I suspect you'd still struggle a little bit with the solder station because of the corrosion on the other side. That's why I think, in my mind, hot air is the best way to free it once you've removed as much solder as you can from the pins here. I'm not too fussed about completely removing all the solders. Just getting as much off as I can. Yeah, that one like I'd like to ah, there we go. See more. The solder will come off that one. Oop. Hope you can see what I'm doing. If 
you can kind of wobble them as you see me doing here, if you push the pin you can feel it wobble, that actually assists in the uh, process because you'll find that the solder on the other side then starts to, as it's wobbling around, it starts to melt properly. If you don't actually move the pin, you'll tend to find the solder on the other side just is like a piece of concrete, as I explained earlier. Uh, X, Y, Z, uh, okay, gotta go, no worries, see you later. Uh, early start of the morning, ah, okay. No worries, thank you for dropping by. Uh, right, where are we at? Uh, I'm surprised actually, we've got 112 people watching. Hope you're all well. Um, let's do the same on this side. Crazy solder. This side's soldering a little bit easier. Bridging things there, doesn't matter. The bridge is getting longer. Look, <laughs> it's a big long line of solder. I'm not too worried about touching these SMD caps. They're all the components. They're all coming off anyway. No need to. Right, let's do this side. Got a bit of solder there. Get rid of it. solder's pump while this is it gets all bits in it and eventually if you squeeze it over the board the bits sort of come out as it ejects solder that first one and then we'll get hot air onto it yeah there we go it's not too bad so I mean there's the odd pin there maybe that third one on the bottom side here could do with just a bit more removing perhaps kind of looks like it's you know still blocked a lot from the other side yeah it's still not freeing up a bit better. <laughs> Not much, so let's give it one more go. It's really not freeing up that one. That's a bit better, right. Let me get the hot air on. So, uh, switch it on. Hang on a minute, it's not plugged in. Let me plug it in. And we'll flip the board over, zoom out for this bit. So, let me think about this. It's going to be hard to show you this actually. Uh, might have to be back a distance here. Yeah, these legs on this tripod. There we go. Um, because what I need to do, well, uh, I'm trying to think. I could just eat it from the top side, actually. So let's do that. Let's do that. There's two different ways you could do it. You could eat it from the bottom side, you could eat it from the top side. But uh, I think when I did the last one, so I was just casting my memory back, and I think I did them from the top side, actually. Where's my captain tape gone? That's on here. I just want to get a little bit of captain tape just on here. Right, you can't see that now, can you? Yeah, a bit of captain tape on the uh, that there. It would help if I remove that first, then I wouldn't have to captain tape it up, would I? And it's the same with that tantalum, actually. Let's just bend that tantalum out of the way. 
super small bit, I'm like tantalum. But that tantalum will be coming off. I don't want to give that tantalum any reason to want to explode at some point in future. Because <laughs> they, you know, they short out on their own anyway, without having been exposed to uh, a load of heat. Right, let me bring the hotter in. Just going to put this uh, underneath here and then lift the board up a sec. Can see where my extractor thing's gone now. Can I see it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, so I've got my little flat tool in case we need to prise it a little bit. And uh, I've got my little extractor. So let's just heat this for a period of time here. It smells awful. It smells like baked water. It's like a mouldy sort of corrosiony sort of warm smell. Can the smell be warm? I don't know. Well, that's how I'm describing it as. Things. I mean, it's not too bad. It's not like uh, really over the top. It's um, you know, it's not loads of fumes or anything coming off it. I guess the mileage from heating from the underside is maybe you'll heat it up quicker if you remove a lot of solder. But from my experience, this, this is where the solder doesn't come off. It's this side where the solder doesn't come off. So. I, I personally go with this this way around. I did the same thing with those Neo Geo boards where you get dip chips like this when I did the four slot and I think maybe my six slot. I think that had a load of corrosion, didn't it? That's six slot. Patience is key. I saw a spark there, did you see that? I don't know if you saw that, there's a little spark between two pins. So I mean that chip might be knackered anyway, it doesn't matter, we've got some new ones. It didn't come from the uh, station, it was like a little spark between two pins on the chip on itself. I think it was a chemical type reaction actually, because the Alkaline. There you go, it's starting to get there, look. Look, that side's coming out. Just go around the back. Seat its bump. Um, tend to focus, you need to focus on the, the VCC, that's the pin there. And the ground pin around here, those are the ones that tend to hold on for the dear lives usually. Again, it's coming out, it's this side here, this side's not hard enough. I'm not sure, I think you can see what I'm doing here. When I normally do this, I'm not doing this with a, on my knee, knee like this, with a knee up, trying to have my camera phone in between the shot. Come on. There we go. Lob the chip off. Uh, yeah, not onto the carpet, it's on the mat. Just uh, put the hot air in a safe position. Steve, is, it, is that a standard chip? Yeah, just cut the legs. Uh, yeah, I did men I mentioned that a few times, Stephen. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say, just cut the legs off. It's just a TTL chip, just cut them off. But you know how I am. It's like, say, I will clean up that chip there. Uh, I'm not going to touch it now. But I will clean that up. And uh, it'll look like new, and I guarantee it'll work. But I've got a brand new set of chips for this anyway. For every one of the boards, I've ordered a brand new chip. So it's just really showing you techniques more than anything. And giving me something to do because I like cleaning things. I'll enjoy cleaning that up later, believe it or not. <laughs> so yeah, you can see look how furry it looks there. We haven't lost any pads, uh, we just need to just clean it up. So let's uh, bring the conduit in with some vinegar. See if we can zoom you a little bit. 
or a lot, as it seems. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'll have a gentle clean there. It's still a bit warm. With the corrosion, though, I think if you if that was let's say it was a custom chip you're trying to remove or something something that's not replaceable, you don't want to chop it off. Um, doing it the way I've done there, you've got least risk of losing the pads with cor so much corrosion. If you try to just you know f uh, diso use your dissolve station and uh, you know pliers on the pins on the underside to snap them off the edges, push them a little bit, wobble them, you might come straight off if you're lucky. But um, often the solder on the top side which won't dissolve. It won't dissolve. You need to do something like that, hot air, to to get it to free up. Corrosion's awful. Anyway, that isn't looking bad actually. That isn't looking bad at all. So let's just bring the normal iron in and uh, just flow and unblock these. Awful that pin. Yeah, it's starting to melt. That needs a bit of solder on it. Needs a bit of solder on it. Let's just feel that. I always feel the surface to make sure it's it's not you got a sticky up bit. Because if you have a sticky up bit and you start doing something like this or with a cotton bud, that's when you'll pull bits off it and lose the pads. But uh, anyway, Stephen does raise a valid point that with stuff like this, 7.4 series, that's off the shelf, that costs you, what, I don't know, 50p a chip or something, maybe less than that, just cut them off. It's, it's a bit easier. There's a bit of solder still there. It feels a bit sticky. These pins down here nearest the battery are awful. So let's wipe that with vinegar again. Not because of the corrosion, but I like to say to etch it, and then as soon as we stick a bit of flux on there and solder that, it'll come up a bit better. Let's just do that next. I think the next thing I'll do is remove. There's a little SMD components from the underside, actually. Just smear a bit of that there, and a bit of that there. Get some solder. Just realised you zoomed super close there, aren't you? I bet YouTube's making it all blocky and pixelated. It's either that or my phone. I've noticed these streams seem to go a bit blocky on my phone from time to time. I mean, it is streaming in 720, I think. I'm not sure whether this phone will do 1080. I didn't see an option. It seems to be streaming at whatever the default is. Well, from you can see, those are looking really good. Looking really good. Especially considering they're so close to the battery. Yeah, I blocked that one, I'm not. And that one. I can't get around the right angle here. Can't move that cap out of the way either. You can't see it, there's a cap further up there, it's just hindering me a little bit. Tell you what, let's just put the braid back a bit and then it will start wicking up it, won't it, instead of blocking it. Yeah, 
yeah, like that. Then you can actually unblock them. Braid's nearly out. We'll unblock that one in a minute. Anyway, let's just focus on these ones here. Yeah, these bottom right hand two here are awful. Partially gone. So what you expect though, the nearer to the battery, the more likely of the damage. Yeah, there we go. So I'll clean with IPA again and I'll show you what that looks like before we move on to those components on the inside. I need to go and get a pen and paper before we start removing those actually because I need to measure them up, write down the size and the component position in order that I can go and order some of them. I'm sure some of them will have spares for because I have ordered quite a lot of components for these boards. So it's a bit like that connector over there, isn't it? We kind of lost the pad. You know, the pad there is barely there, and the pad there on those two is barely there, uh, just because they're so close to the corrosion. How many traces do you think are going to be needed on this? How much do you reckon in total? I can tell you now straight away that like four or five, uh, so you can't see what I'm pointing here, four or five are needed on this small chip here. Nearly every single connection on there, despite the fact they look all right, none of them are joined up. So, I mean, that doesn't bode well, does it? If that's how bad those ones are, um, you know, these are equally as uh, close to the battery as that small chip is. I reckon maybe... 10 wires might be needed around this area here. But it could be a lot more. A little bit more IP out of here under the cotton board. Yeah, so some people won't do the approach I'm going with here. They might just remove everything then start to clean up with vinegar, then start to, you know, on everything all at once, and then start to use braid on everything, and then give a final pass over with something to clean it, etc. I just clean everything bit by bit as I'm going along and waste lots of time. It's uh, kind of a bad habit, really. Um, and that's what I was talking about earlier, about speeding up the process. As I go through some of the other boards, this is my first one, the first test candidate, really, of, uh, you know, an extreme corrosion job here. See, see what needs to be done, what sort of problems we get, and uh, how easy it is to fix and then as I do the other ones my technique will change a little bit I'm just going to literally with those ones m maybe just go straight out with hot air not even dissolve the things on these chips here maybe even just cut them off cut them off cut them off you know hot air pull things off um, all in one big continuous session so that everything's removed from the board all at once to try and do them as quick as possible uh, you never know I might do that as a stream as well uh, maybe like a 24-hour stream or <laughs> not that long, but you know a long stream. I could imagine it being like five or six hours from start to finish, or something like removing everything and cleaning everything up before we even get a chance to put things on. Uh, we'll remove these horrible uh, legs here. You know, there's like um, zero ohm links go through those, so let's just uh, zoom you out a bit. Um, we'll flip it over and let's uh, let's get those out. The weight. Let's move the camera over here now because it's on the other side of the board. Sorry. I've lost track of where they are already. Hang on. Oh, they're here. Yeah, they're here, aren't they? It's unusual to see so much corrosion on this side. Normally on the other ones, I haven't seen one where it's leaked under, underneath like this. It's been always on the top side. I can't see what's going on here now. Oh, there you go. It's pointing downwards, isn't it? Oh, what am I doing? 
I think when I did these last time, actually, what I did is I grabbed them from the other side. You're not going to be able to see this a sec while well, I just lift the board up. Hang on a sec. Yeah, I'm kind of grabbing the left one here with the pliers. I think. Oh, come on, Melt. I need more solder now. I've got no hands to do it with. Yeah, I'm just kind of trying to bend. That's it. Bend it away. That's one out. I don't think we. Uh, where's the solder stuck on there? I don't think we've uh, damaged the uh, thing there. I'm just bring a bit of solder in. Some solder there. Yeah, that's all right. Do the same with the next one. What's interesting with these is these one ohm uh, links. I've got some new ones. I'll show you in a minute. But the corrosion is that bad. The centre parts have just fallen off. All you're left with is the ends of the legs. Let's just go show how bad the corrosion was on this. That's it. That's another one down. Do the same with the next one. Don't grab the blue thing. The back bent over as well and been flattened like something's impacted into them actually. Oh, I can't grip that one, hang on a sec. Has it gone now? What's up there? It's bent over. The pin is bent over. There you go. I'm trying to lift it up so I can get the pliers on some. The other thing you've got to be careful of when you're doing this, obviously, is not pull these too hard. You know, you're trying to pull them through, but at the same time, you want the solder to be molten. And you've got to try and pull it at a funny angle because of the bent over, you know, to try and free it up rather than just wrench it out, if that makes sense. I need some solder. There we go, it's come out. Let's just uh, block that. Oh, it's fine on its own there. Got a mind of its own. There you go. And of course, lots of clean up work is, you know, you'd have to do lots of scrubbing on this and stuff and inspecting super close because you get particles and solder all over the place when you're doing this much removal work, there's many components and things and using a, a solder pump. Um, anyway, that's, uh, I'll show you that. So that's, that's, uh, those bottom ones out of the way now. Uh, we'll just do the tops, top sides of those as well. Let's see, I can just bend those over again. That's two, that's three. Grab one with pliers. If I can get the pliers in there. And the left one. I haven't had any solids there, have I? Let me just see if I can just reach the solder over. There we go. I think. Yeah, that was out. On to the next one. Yeah, when you kind of get into the flow, some of these things can be quite quick. Can't see what's happening with that one. It's kind of half out. There you go, it's out. And the final one. A bit more solder. Come on. That's it. 
I'm not just pulling them, but what I'm having to do, I'll show you the motion. I'm grabbing it from the inside and I'm having to sort of twist it like that because they kind of hooked like that through the board, you know, it's like it's, it's kind of like in a loop sort of shape. So as I say, I'm sort of pulling it the right way to free it up rather than just wrenching it through, if that makes sense. It might not sound important, but if you just try and pull them out when the you know it's bent one way on one side of the board and bent one way on the other, you will pull the through hole with it. It will just literally just wrench everything off. You've got to kind of go the same way that it's fitted, if that makes sense to a degree. You can try and straighten it on either side. That then you can pull it straight out, then can't you? It's small things like that I often forget to mention when I'm doing things. Someone might just think I'm just going at it. You know, like a lunatic. Hi, Zarkos. Nice to see you, Xavier. Yeah, so all these uh, A3000 bolts came from Xavier. Much appreciated. Um, so that's that. Let's just flip that back over. Move you over here. And uh, we'll just I'll zoom you in a bit. We'll just. That's a lot. It doesn't matter. It's better to see more than less, I think. Let's we can just move this here a little bit. I think you can see how awful this is here. Let's uh, clean that with a bit of vinegar first. What time is it now? Oh, that's three. How long have we been running for? I'm not sure. Uh, does it say on the thing there? Surprisingly, on the camera, it doesn't tell me how long I've been run, <laughs> which is uh, it's not helpful, is it? Because what I might do is I might get off soon, I don't know. We'll remove the ones from the underside, those little SMD ones, and I'll show you some of the components that are going to go back on here in a second. Uh, well, they're not going to go on in a second, I'll show you them in a minute. Let's, uh, where's the kind of fiberglass pen? Let's just have a quick clean here on this side. Some of this yellowness might come away as well with a bit of work with a fiberglass look. see lots of copperish stuff around here this is you know with just a little bit of pressure there you start to expose all sorts of things there that normally have a solder mask on um, it's unavoidable you know tin them up as we have done with some of the other things around there bit of uh, IPA there now I mean, look at the colour of the cotton but this is the thing you know and you, you continue to see stuff like that come off the board no matter how many times you've cleaned it. But anyway, you can see that's far better, I think. Um, again, tons of wires around here. Look, I think that's a wire, that's a wire. Got a wire or two here, one there, some traces, wire, wire, wire. Same thing, you know, these little wires. It's going to be a case of scraping the tops, inspecting the modification. Clean, clean, clean and test. Um, there's a trace here, I can't see where that goes. Is that a wire? I honestly can't see what that is from here. I think it is, I think there's a wire there, it's gone. Um, anyway, right, let me just uh, see if we can find a pen. Have I got a pen here? You'd think I would have a pen. Oh, I do have a pen, I think it's a pen. Um, I've got a bit of paper. Just test my pen. Yeah, the pen works. That's handy. Uh, I'll flip the board over. I'll have to relocate yet. Let me move some of these things out of the way now because I'm getting stuff everywhere here. Move all the block off there. Flat chip. Chip over there. Move you over here, I think. So those. Those are all scary and need to come off. Um, can't see what's what now. Oh, I can look through the camera. So, oh, I think I can. Can't see what that one is there. 
R5 something. Uh, that one's R569, isn't it? So R R569. Just write that down. It's got nothing on top of it apart from uh, some red stuff. The actual package, you know, the top is gone, the blue bit covering the paint, the prints on it is all gone. So I'm just going to measure that on the meter. It's a short. <laughs> I can't be right. 0.8 ohms. How is that 0.8 ohms? I wouldn't imagine any 0.8 ohm resistors on this board, if I'm honest. Um, so, I mean, that needed replacing, didn't it? Anyway, I've got a note of it. I don't know what it is. I'll have to look up that. And you can do that. What I did with all the other ones when I ordered all the parts was to look at the uh, schematics. And there's a parts list at the beginning of it, or at the end of it, I forget which. So, I just need to look up on there later what R569 is and um, order one of those. It's not 0.8 ohm, I'm sure. It could be 1 ohm, maybe. Maybe it is a 1 ohm resistor. Uh, so... Again, I'm trying to read the thing next to it here. What's this? That's point, not point 0.6 ohms. <laughs> oh, anyway, what's that one? That one's R5... Look through the camera. R568, isn't it? R568. I'm going to put question mark, question mark, because I don't know what those are, what size they are. I'm just reading that comment there. What's that? Uh, from left to right, bottom row, R5.7 to R5.7.2. Ah, OK. So the next one's R5.6.7. R5.6.7. I'm just curious to read some of these as I'm doing them, just to see if any of them do actually read as anything normal, other than the short. It's probably the corrosion that's actually leading these to be few ohms. That one says 100 and something K. No, it's not. No, it's measuring 2.4 ohms. All it does is move the probe a tiny bit there and suddenly it changed from... It's showing 2.6 ohms. Yeah, it's going to be the corrosion that ultimately is the reason why those are all measuring as a short probably. I'm sure it's a case of like some of these will be 200 odd ohms, some will be a K, some might be 4K7. There might be a 1K but None of those are measuring what they should do. So we got that one R five six. Which one's that one? That one's R five five nine. Is it? I don't know. I'll tell you what I can do. I've got another board to compare to. Actually, the working one. So maybe I should just not worry too much and just just remove these now. I think just get rid of the blooming things. I mean, the silk screen's still there, isn't it? Anyway, so. There's nothing. I don't know, need to write anything down. I don't think. I can do it afterwards. So we'll do the same thing I did before. I'll just uh, have a go at the bottom uh, pins on these. Not really the pin, but the bottom side. See if I can get anything exposed there, so that when I heat with a bit of uh, solder and flux, it might just start to heat it and melt it. Um, that's just a pad, isn't it? There's nothing there. Yeah, that one's just a pad. I just found out it's easier looking through the camera, actually. I'm looking through the camera. Oh, that one's just a pad. That one's just a pad. So, crazy solder. Yeah, one side's all right, actually, isn't it? That top side, there you go, it's come off pretty e easy, that. Get rid of that. One down. Yeah, when you've got two boards of the same, like I have here, I've got multiple of these. It's, um, oh, hang on, camera's, camera's going. Uh, that's something that makes it easier if you've got multiple of the same uh, thing, you know, you've got a good working reference model nearby. It's, uh, there's no problem with things like this. You can just measure them and... Uh, Swap out that way, you know, order replacement. That one's hanging on. 
that bottom one, the bottom side of it. I think it's... Sometimes with components like this, they, they kind of there's some glue and manufacture on the underside of the board holding the component sensor onto the PCB. So yeah, be aware of that. There isn't on these, I don't think. On these, you literally just generally heat one side, and it'll you know when it's heated for a little bit, it'll come off anyway. I've seen that on Neo Geos though, around the battery area, you know, like you try and do a battery mod to one of those, and the diodes that are soldered onto those are uh, generally glued down in the middle, epoxied. So even when you heat the pins up with hot air and stuff, the component doesn't budge, and you're like, what is going on? How's it staying on? And it's the epoxy holding it in place. Which means you end up overheating the, pin, the pads if you're not careful. Because you're assuming it's the pads that are holding it when it isn't. That's another one that's sticking. Look. That one's really persistent. Moving now. There we go. Final two. These are the worst two. Yeah, I meant to mention actually, Xavier has uh, been uploading some uh, Archimedes videos recently. Just small clips of things, demos of different games and things like that. So uh, I haven't had a chance to watch all of them. I did watch uh, one or two of them. There's one with a, it was a flight sim, I think. I was watching this uh, plane take off and do a stall turn or something. It was quite interesting. Um, yeah, it's good if you like anything to do with the Archimedes, you should check his channel out. He's also been doing some uh, work on his uh, uh, Shadow of the Beast type demo that he's been uh, putting together. I think he's been building an engine or something with uh, you know power like scrolling and uh, music playback there. You know, he's got some of the Shadow of the Beast artwork there. I don't know if he's planning on doing a full version of Shadow of the Beast. But it's worth checking that out. That is not going to come off easy. Again, I can smell baked corrosion. There we go, it's come off. Oop, sorry. Yeah, so I'll use... There's still something there, look. I can see it on the camera. <laughs> yeah, I just... I didn't see that there. Somehow... It got back on the board. It's gone now. I'll just use the solder socket to remove the majority of this and then get the braid on it. it does mean I need more components now though. Some of these I will have spares off. I'll show you that next actually, but I'm probably going to be getting off soon. I want to have a break, I think, and there's probably only so much of this you can stomach. Plus I'm getting a bad back at the angle I'm trying to film out and everything. gone. I can see the big there you go, particle solder there. Look. Yeah, those pads there are awful. Yeah, that's a clever. Some of these are just empty pads, aren't they? That's uh, that one thing I have to remember. Not all of this stuff here is fitted. Let's have a little bit of a cleaner around there with some IPA. 
Yeah, sorry if I've missed lots and lots of comments here. I've been so focused on what I've been doing here. 81 minutes. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Yeah, I will get off in a few minutes, I think. I'll show you some of the components, and then the next time I show you this board, hopefully I'll have finished removing all the bits around here. I mean, there isn't a lot more to remove around, is there? Another 74, well, I'll show you the set on the other side. There's another 74 series chip to come off. There's the 40 pin uh, chip up there for the keyboard, the keyboard MCU 50C81 or something, is it? And there's the keyboard connector, as well as some passives and things, you know, like there's a couple of tantalums and a, an electrolytic. Uh, and a few more connectors at the top as well, just near the edge there, near the keyboard interface thing. The ones that you use to do a hard. Uh, disc upgrade sort, sort of thing, you know, it's like a expansion bus, isn't it? Those connectors there need to come off, really. Again, I'm not, I'm not pressing too hard here, because there's probably the odd bit of solder that needs to come off still. And again, these need a second pass, I think, you know, get some flux on there, get some more braid, slide the braid around, rinse, repeat. I don't think we need to use the fiberglass pen here though. It has just literally affected the, the solder and the pads just a little. Not like on the other side of the board. Anyway, that's looking a bit better. So let me zoom you out, flip back over. Let's just see what see what's left here. So yeah, keyboard uh, connector, uh, a tantalum, a ceramic, another ceramic, I think, uh, electrolytic, this chip here, that socket needs to come off, this needs to come off, and then these probably need to come off, yeah, I would think, and then it'll just be clean, clean around here, you know, clean everything up, tin everything up. Inspect for damage, work out, draw a diagram, work out where I need uh, wires, certainly four or five around here. The ROMs look okay from what I can see. Um, there's going to be some corrosion here, you know, some of the traces here will be damaged. Obviously, I've got this strip here as well, I haven't done the extra connector there yet. Have, I? Um, have we got another SMD component there? No, we don't, we've just got some pads. The component might have actually gone, because that was the other thing I didn't mention, is when I took these out, these Archimedes, you know, some of them have rattling bruises, and I found like, SMB components floating around inside the, the packaging. So in places they've just fallen off. The solder points are given away, they've just fallen off. And I did mention that in respect to one of these zero ohm links. So if I show you uh, some of the bits I've got here, and this is the thing you need so much stuff to fix these. Hang on, I've got a few loose sockets come out and socket thing here. Um, so you saw those already. You need loads of those, and then you've got insane amounts of resistors and caps for the different places and things on the um, different sizes of sockets so i've got i don't know three or four different sizes of sockets here for the different places i did get some eight pin sockets because the chip that was down here may as well socket that up haven't we there's no point in soldering it straight on if you're going to remove a chip from a board you can fit a socket fit a socket uh, even if you think you'll never ever need to swap it out again, it's better to have a socket than uh, just solder the chip on. Here's the zero links. Can you see those? Yeah, it looks like a resistor that's just got a black band. So those are what will go uh, in these positions uh, here. There's uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, eight of them, I think, roughly, something like that. So uh, some through hole resistors. Those are for something else, actually. I don't know how those got in there. Uh, yeah, brand new uh, 74 series chips, a few different types there. Crystals, because all the crystals on these are absolutely shot. The one that was on this is like just solid green. Chances of it working is slim to none. Uh, more capacitors, uh, some uh, ceramic uh, disc type caps there. More 740. Oh, hang on, those are op amps, LM324. Forgot why I bought those now. Are those the ones that, for this board? I think they are actually. I, I think I bought those because I think one of them had a, a fault or something. I can't quite remember now. Uh, anyway, more sockets and things. Uh, pin header. This, the thing, unfortunate thing with this is I'm going to have to cut this to size because these, you know, trying to find strips of this that are exactly the right size, like that one there's five pin. That one's five pin. Try and find five pins of that. 
it doesn't seem to exist. Well, I can't seem to find it. You might be able to on RS. They might have different ones, different lengths. But you tend to get it in big strips like that. So those are going to have to be cut up individually to replace that piece they already took off earlier. Uh, and all of these ones as well. They'll we'll need replacing um, more caps and things. What's that? Oh, there's more of those keyboard connectors. I didn't order enough the first time. I thought that would be enough, but I've only got one, two, three, four, five. About eight, ten there. Well, you're going to need two for every one. So for each board, you're going to need four of those in theory. So ten wouldn't even be enough to do uh, more than two boards, would it? And be short on the third board, board probably. And uh, I'm not sure what those are. Some sticky pads, those somehow seem to have mixed the way in there. Anyway, have you got any problems or anything before uh, I get off, guys? Because I think we've gone on long enough uh, this afternoon. Danny Arnold. Oh, it's thank you, Danny. It was Danny yesterday who mentioned the point about the uh, reset signal on that ROM switcher. If you missed the start of the stream there, following up from yesterday's uh, you know, kickstart ROM switcher there, it was just the uh, reset signal that that single connection needed to go to. And uh, correction to the previous video, I, I couldn't see it on the video. On the, you know, my eyes weren't that good. I thought the chip that was on that um, thing was a uh, HC174. It isn't. It's was HCT74. I couldn't see it. I was misreading the T for a 1. Uh, now, if I'd seen that, actually, I knew that that was definitely a flip-flop. And I think I might be more inclined to jump to the conclusion it probably goes to the reset line. Um, and that's exactly where I stuck it. I think someone said pin 21, but that's not where it goes. It goes to pin 5, I think. Uh, that's where I stuck it. Um, and uh, as you saw at the start of the stream, if you missed it, it's working. That one switch, no problems at all. You just press reset, and it toggles over. Uh, I lost my lid from my vinegar now. Oh, it's all right, I found it. Those pads look pretty good, actually. Yeah, I think so. I think, despite uh, how bad the corrosion was, and I'll perhaps show you a picture in the next stream, if I can, of this, because I took some pictures, and you can see them on Twitter. If you look at Twitter and just look at my stream for the last few weeks, you know, roll back a little bit, ignore the waffle, you'll see some pictures of this board. The picture sort of at the start, and it was all green and furry and orangey and everything horrendous. It looked like it, you would want to put it in the bin the state it was in. Seriously, it was that bad. Um, and that's why I went for this one. A kind of case study kind of thing, really. Let's see see how we get on. It's a, a guinea pig. Let's make this one the guinea pig. See how how salvageable they, they really are when they look that bad. Because sometimes things can look worse than they actually are. Um, anyway, my guess is we'll end up with 10 or so wires around here. I think several wires around here. Uh, maybe the odd one somewhere up here because there are some, as you can see there, let me just get you a bit closer, look how bad that, that is around there. Look, it's awful. I'd be surprised if there isn't any damage around that area actually, there might be the odd one. Um, but I think this will live again. I think this will live again. Unless that's died, that IOC. Um, if we can clean around it and reflow it. I, see, I don't see why not. I don't see why not. Uh, Stephen said you spot some rice. I'm sure that will fix it. Yeah, what is it with all these people with blooming corrosion? Like, I stick some stick in a, a thing of rice, you know, a big bag of rice in a Ziploc bag. That'll sort it out. That'll fix your corrosion. The main thing is with things like that is um, certainly on iPhones and iPads and stuff. There's people don't remove the remove the battery, do they? Unless you remove the power, the thing is still powered. So whilst you've got all that moisture in there, it's not just about corrosion, is it? It's about Electricity taking short circuits through, you know, through the liquid, through the you can class it as electrolyte, I guess, through the electrolytes of nearby things, and it's like sizzling away there, and you know all that sort of stuff. Got a socket on there, look. <laughs> Didn't notice. Um, yeah, um, if you do uh, drop something in the water there, you switch or your phone or your tablet. Don't stick it in a bag of rice for goodness' sake. The best thing you could do is strip it down as soon as possible disconnect the battery um, and then think contemplate on you know how to how to best dry it really you know absorb that moisture from the board wash it away with IPA certainly whatever you do do not power it back on for you know a few days until it's you know it's totally 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 dried out and you've removed all, any possible signs of moisture um, some of the spider chips <laughs> Uh, terrible fire, that's the state you get the BBC A3000 near if the battery hasn't been changed. I think you'd be disappointed when you open your wrist to PC. Yeah, 
I would imagine that some of the newer risk PCs are going to be worse, even worse, and hard, much harder to deal with, because you know what? Uh, well, this is a thirty-two bit system, isn't it? But still, you know the comp you know the compactness of the boards and all that sort of stuff. And we've got larger chips on there that run faster, and we've got more connections for more RAM and all that sort of stuff. Wider, uh, you know, buses and things. You may find that those are even harder to work on the risk PCs if they've got similar levels of corrosion. So yeah, right, I'm getting off guys. I'm sorry if I've missed anything. I will uh, watch the stream back later to see if I've uh, missed anything. Uh, Stephen, uh, Mike Simcox, thanks for a great stream again, Chris. Stay, stay safe, mate. Thank you, you too. Uh, and thanks to Danny Arnold for pointing out that thing with the reset on that memory expansion last video. Thank you to the donations we had earlier on. Uh, I had some, I think, Swedish Krona, didn't know which was uh, really sweet. Hang on, let me have a look. I've lost it now. Can't see that far back, I don't think. Yeah, well, let me see that far back. Um, anyway, thank you very much, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. Stay safe.